Hello, I am Dr. H. Ivy, a blood-borne pathogens expert. And I'm Dr. BBP, and I'm also a blood-borne pathogens expert and specialist. We are so excited to share this presentation with you today. I can barely contain myself because I'm so excited to get started. How about you? Yes, I'm about to burst. Let's get started. Well, excuse me. I think you've lost your audience. They're asleep and drooling. I think we need a new approach. Stop! Don't do it! Then BBP not through it! Go get some gloves! Protect yourself! Save your life and save them! Don't do it! Don't take the risk! Be smart about prevention, Viz. I wanted to share facts about BBP. What's that? What are BBPs? Bloodborne pathogens are microorganisms in blood and body fluids that can cause disease. The three most common are hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. Let me tell you about germs that can cause you harm. We'll tell you how to keep so there's no alarm. The whole pathogens are all around. Don't let the bad germs get you down. What are blood one pathogens if you eat? It's a tiny little organism that causes disease. You ain't gonna find BBPs around. And bodily fluid is what they I say what? What? Where are these BBPs found? You say you'd like to know where bloodborne pathogens are found? Bloodborne pathogens are found in blood and blood products to include semen, vaginal secretions, breast milk, cerebrospinal fluid, amniotic fluid, and contact with mucous membranes including eyes, nose, and mouth. Is hepatitis HIV a BBP? It's on the face, don't you? Now this is some serious stuff. Tell us about hepatitis. Well, what is hepatitis B, ABV, hepatitis C, H? What is all this? It's an inflammation of the liver, usually due to acute viral infections primarily in the liver. Symptoms include jaundice, abdominal pain, and fever. What's HIV? HIV is a virus that attacks the immune system and can cause AIDS. You're right. HIV does affect the immune system, and it makes it more difficult for people with HIV to fight off infection. But there's no vaccine for it. That's true, too. But a person who has HIV or is HIV positive can live a long, healthy life. Can I get HIV from the torty cup of sink? Now, the chance to get the AIDS from my dad, what do you think? I don't know what you think. How can a man of steel like me get infected with BBPs? Knowing the modes of transmission and the routes of entry are important. It helps prevent mishaps in the workplace. An injured worker's blood could contaminate broken glass, work surface, tools, or clothing. If you have contact with a contaminated object, you could become infected. Modes of entry include unprotected opening in the skin, unprotected mucous membrane openings, penetration of the skin and contamination from semen, vaginal secretions, and any other body fluid or tissue containing blood. What if I'm working and I get cut? You're wrapped with the supervisor to the nurse, that's what. What? You better listen to this. If you're injured by broken glass or another type of break in the skin, report it to your supervisor immediately. Universe precautions, what is that? We'll teach you about tricks of germ combat. Universal precautions, ooh, we gotta check this one out. This sounds very interesting. What are universal precautions? Universal precaution means treating everyone's blood and other body fluids as infectious. This precaution is governed by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. It's otherwise known as OSHA. What if there is blood on the floor or a bloody nose? 
Each school has an exposure control plan that indicates specific methods for cleaning surfaces that may be contaminated with infectious material. Dispose of blood in accordance with your school's exposure control plan. If available, use the red or orange biohazard bag with warning signs that indicate it is potentially hazardous material. Kids, tell them about the exposure control plan. Clean equipment that has potentially been exposed to bloodborne pathogens as soon as possible with the proper disinfectant. Use a broom and dustpan to clean broken glass. Do not clean up glass with your hands. Put contaminated sharps in biohazard containers specifically designated for sharps. Do not put them in the trash. If you come in contact with laundry that you think may have been exposed to blood-borne pathogens, make sure that you place the item in a leak-proof bag with minimal agitation. Do not sort or rinse the contaminated laundry. If the items are wet, you may need to double bag the item. Regularly disinfect bins, cans, and receptacles that may be contaminated from bloodborne pathogens. Never push trash down into the receptacle with your hands or feet. Gently shake trash into the bag and carry it by the top away from your body. How can I avoid getting BBPs? Use personal protective gear, don't you see? Is that the same as PPE? What is that? Personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, can bring a mini response kit into your classroom and is often in your first aid kit. It usually contains band-aids and gloves. Typically, full protective equipment is located in the health office. Using PPE can help decrease the exposure to bloodborne pathogens when used properly. Check with your school administration regarding proper disposal and replacement of PPE. Make sure you know the location of the PPE in your school and check to make sure that it is still functional. PPE can include one or more of the following and will be determined by the level of risk to exposure. If you have an allergy or sensitivity to gloves, make sure that the non-allergenic or latex-free gloves, glove liners, or powder-free gloves are available in your school. Gloves can accidentally tear, so make sure that you cover abrasions or cuts on the hand prior to putting on gloves. If the gloves become contaminated, make sure that they are replaced with new gloves. Never use soiled gloves. Always wash your hands immediately after removing gloves. Here is an example of protective gown, protective eyewear, and protective mask. Resuscitation mouthpieces and bags are for one-time use only, and they should be used to protect you from bloodborne pathogens. If a kid or a post gets a bloody injury, Pop on them gloves will prevent it, surely. What? You want me to help you with the bloody injury? The question is whether to help with the bloody injury. Hmm, that's a good question. Should I help with a child or a co-worker? If a co-worker or a child is injured, make every effort to put on gloves to prevent exposure to blood and body fluids. School staff, Follow up with your administration regarding any exposure to bloodborne pathogens. What's up with prevention of BBP? Wash your hands all the time to save up free. Now what you gonna do if you think you've been exposed? Go see your favorite manager, don't you suppose? Don't panic. Wash the exposed area immediately with soap and running water. If cut by an item which has blood on it, Try to save the item for contamination testing. Fourth, promptly report the incident to your supervisor. Fifth, seek medical attention. And finally, file an accident report with your school's designated person. Remember, 
Exposure doesn't always lead to infection. There are some misconceptions about HIV that we need to clear up pronto. The increased incidence of AIDS has caused fear that have developed into misconceptions. HIV cannot be passed on by casual contact. Therefore, you cannot get HIV by sharing foods, drinking glasses, or towels. From sinks or toilets. Insect bites such as mosquitoes. BBP, it ain't no joke. So be careful of an injury when the skin is broke. Stop! Don't do it! Get BBP all through it! Go get some gloves! Protect yourself! Save your life and save your health! Go